Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. You're all very welcome. Um, we just have a lot of people just joining us, so I might just give it another 30 seconds or so before I kick things off. So if you just bear with us for a couple of seconds, uh, we have a number of people just joining us at the moment. Okay, so um, good evening, everybody, and uh, you're all very welcome um, to uh, this evening's, I suppose, uh, discussion around the BA Honours in Home Economics and Business in Munster Technological University with the Protected Pathway to the Professional Master of Education in UCC. Uh, my name is Dr. Noel Murray. I'm head of the Department of Tourism and Hospitality at Munster Technological University, where this BA programme resides. Uh, and I'm joined by a number of colleagues this evening, but it'll be myself presenting the first um, part of this presentation around the degree programme. And then I'll be joined by Dr. Brian Murphy from University College Cork, who is the programme director of the, of the Professional Master of Education. So I suppose this is an exciting day. Uh, we only launched this suite of programmes uh, just lit literally a week ago. And uh, I suppose the attention um, we've been getting and the queries have been coming in uh, thick and fast over the last week. So we're really excited um, to, to talk about this program tonight. It is the first home economics program uh, development uh, in the state since 1952. So uh, I know a lot of you have been have been waiting for a new home economics offering for quite a, a long time. So uh, we're delighted to bring this to you this evening. Um, so just maybe to give you some background on the program and just to give you some insight into where this came from, how we designed it, uh, and how this, I suppose, developed over the last year, uh, year and a half, probably. Uh, and then it, I go through all the various elements of the program, and then I'll hand over to Brian, who will give us some more insights on the professional masters of education. So I suppose, first of all, you're all very well, well aware there's a shortage of home economics teachers in Ireland. This has been well documented in the media. But also this is um, the realization of many schools all over the country where there's been a real critical shortage of home economics teachers for, for many years. Uh, on a personal level, um, because we have a center of excellence for culinary education uh, at Munster Technological University in Cork, we were getting multiple queries uh, from prospective students. Uh, and actually, I probably should have said at the start, uh, in case some of you aren't aware of Munster Technological University, because we are only in uh, only set up since the 1st of January of this year in terms of our new name. Uh, it was an amalgamation of Cork Institute of Technology and the Institute of Technology Tralee. So when I'm talking about um, MTU today, um, I'm, I'm referring to the Cork campus in Bishopstown, which was formerly uh, Cork Institute of Technology. So as I was saying, um, we got a huge number of queries over the last year or two from prospective students, from teachers, uh, from a range of different stakeholders actually, uh, wondering if this is something we could look at. Um, so we, I suppose, started out looking at de designing and developing a program. And I suppose for any teacher education program, uh, you have to have uh, a partner in terms of a traditional uh, university. Um, so I was delighted when we first went to the School of Education at University College Cork. Uh, we really pitched this idea and there was huge buy-in from both ourselves and from UCC uh, in terms of the need to develop a program like this. So I suppose this, this led to a lot of discussions uh, to come up with, with the design of the program. And I suppose what we feel is really unique about this suite of programs is that students get the opportunity uh, to go to two universities over a five year period, which I think is really nice and really novel. Uh, and, it, and they get to enjoy the benefits of both universities. Uh, in terms of, of the program itself, uh, we have, it's a Bachelor of, of, uh, Bachelor of Arts Honours in Home Economics and Business. Um, and so that's a unique subject combination in that uh, it's not available anyplace else in the country. So uh, we're delighted with that. A number of reasons why we selected business as a second subject option. Um, one, I suppose there's some discipline crossover between home economics and business and it was a nice fit. Uh, it's also quite unique in terms of not being available elsewhere. Um, but I suppose 
equally important. It's something that will be well really sought after by schools because graduates from this these two programs uh, will basically have you know a really good skill set where business is taught at junior and even certain level in all schools uh, and home economics uh, in a huge number of schools. So uh, a really really good um, area for graduates to have this this discipline expertise. Um, I'll also get to maybe later on just in the presentation in terms of the graduate profile after three years of this program and why business is an important part of that, but I'll get to that a little later. Um, in terms of just giving you an overview of the program, uh, as I said, it's a unique design involving uh, two universities. Um, it's not a joint program either, and I suppose that's important to make this distinction. We designed the program on a three plus two model where three years you come uh, and learn discipline expertise at Munster Technological University. Uh, you were awarded uh, a Bachelor of Arts Honours in Home Economics and Business at that point. And then assuming you get your honours degree, you're guaranteed the pathway uh, into the Freshman Master of Education in UCC. So we've had a number of queries coming in over the last week as to what does a protected pathway mean to the Professional Master of Education? So that really means that you're guaranteed a place once you uh, complete the three years of the degree program and get a minimum of a 2-2 degree, which is an honours degree, uh, you are guaranteed your place uh, in UCC the following year. Um, and it, I suppose the distinction also must be made that you must complete both programmes, both, both the BA and the Professional Masters uh, of Education in order to teach home economics and business to leaving certain level. So completing one of the programmes is not enough. Uh, you have to complete both programmes in order, in order to be qualified to teach. Um, I suppose just a very brief here on the strategic rationale for this, you know, I mentioned previously that there's a, a major shortage of home economics teachers in the country, um, but we also had, we looked at the expertise we had within our own um, universities. Uh, in the top left, as I said, you can see a picture there of our, um, one of our culinary students. So we have a center of culinary excellence, um, which is, you know, a really, really a good place to come and learn in terms of culinary education. And in the bottom uh, picture there, I just have a picture of um, Crawford College of Art and Design. So again, looking at the textiles component and fashion component of the home economics program. So really, uh, we were looking to leverage the expertise. We also have um, research groups in the area of nutrition, uh, in the area of um, uh, in business, obviously, as well, and entrepreneurship. So it was great to look at leveraging that. Um, also, from the School of Education's point of view in UCC, their mission is to serve the partner schools and the broad, broader um, school system. So I suppose this was unique in terms of allowing the two universities to come together uh, and look in terms of the discipline expertise that we had in, in uh, home economics and business at MTU, but equally the education component where Brian will talk about little, a little bit later where UCC have been, have been involved in, in education programs for you know, over 115 years at this point. Uh, the other piece is we designed the program so it fitted into the existing Professional Master of Education UCC, and that was really important because you have, we have uh, an existing PME program in UCC, um, which is really well respected, really well taught out, um, you know, and is works really well for schools and for graduates. And so it was great to work with our with our colleagues in UCC to design the, the degree program to fit um, seamlessly into that PME offering. Um, before I go on to teaching council registration, maybe one of the things just to highlight as well is over the course of the development of these of both of these offerings, uh, we would have had huge input from home economics experts uh, from home economics teaching experts at principal level uh, and at university level uh, um, internationally uh, in other universities. So in terms of how this process and how this program was developed and taught out, it has gone through a rigorous uh, academic scrutiny from home economics experts and business experts to ensure that we've designed a program that is really fit for purpose that means graduates have the best possible expertise when they go out into the workplace. And we're you know, so excited about this program because we feel that our, our graduates will be, will be really sought after. Um, I'm just briefly going to talk to you about teaching council requirements because this is a critical part of any program in teacher education. Uh, as many of you might know, there are new um, requirements for registration post 2023 with the teaching council. 
Uh, so for example, it must be a level eight degree on the national framework for um, qualifications and skills, um, which is why we designed this as a level eight program. In terms of the home economics piece, there must be a minimum 60 uh, credits. So ECTS refers to our credit system. Uh, and for maybe some second level students that might be joining us, um, our subjects, are, our, our modules are basically five ECTS. Um, so five credits per module. Uh, but to get teacher council registration, you must complete um, areas of food studies, textiles, fashion and design, uh, home design, family resource management, and social studies. So when we designed this program, we made sure that we met all of the requirements of the teaching council, but equally that, student, that our graduates of the program are, are able to teach all of the discipline areas that are required of them in the curriculum at junior and leaving cert level. In terms of business, the minimum here also is 60 credits and students must complete five of the following areas below. So as you know, business again, like home economics, is a broad ranging discipline. So it needs to cover areas such as organizational behavior, business innovation, enterprise and entrepreneurship, management, business environment, human resource management, marketing, business law and accounting, finance or economics. So again, you need to meet the minimum requirements of 60 credits uh, in, in terms of business. Um, so I just wanted to give you that insight because I suppose it's critically important that people are aware that this program uh, allows graduates to meet all of these requirements. When, in actual fact, when you see how we designed the program here, uh, on the left, you'd see that actually the home economics program, uh, we have actually 100 credits of learning because of the multidisciplinary nature of home economics and indeed the practical uh, nature of the program. Uh, we deem the 60 credit minimum requirements threshold set by the teacher council and uh, we wanted to exceed that because we really wanted our graduates to be um you know really good in terms of the skill set and competent and the skill set that they developed uh, in these areas so if you look at the likes of food studies which has 50 credits which is equivalent basically of, of 10 modules over the three-year program uh, about half of that would refer to, to culinary modules in terms of the practical aspects of culinary and the other half would be in the nutrition and food science side of things. Um, so it'll give you a, a sense of kind of the weighting of the program and how we've looked at developing the skills and expertise necessary in our graduates. Equally there's 15 credits in, in terms of textiles, fashion and design, 15 credits in terms of social studies, 10 credits in family resource management and 10 credits in home design and management. And again, just to reiterate the expertise, so we have the Crawford College uh, of Art and Design, we have a Department of Applied Social Studies um, that are, you know, developing students up to doctoral level. Uh, similarly, we have a, a School of Architecture uh, for the home design part, uh, and we have an engineering uh, department as well, or a number of engineering departments. So in terms um, of the efficiency and sustainability side of, of the discipline. So that really gives you a good sense that 100 credits um, of the 180 credits over three years is, is part of the home economics makeup. Uh, then there are 60 credits uh, in terms of business. So again, this allows the students to make sure that they've met the requirements of the teaching council. And you'll see we have a range of different elements there of the core business areas. So management, law, entrepreneurship, human resource management, the business environment, so things like the European Union and how we operate in, in global business, uh, accounting and economics. Uh, we spent a lot of time in terms of looking at the curriculum at junior and leaving certain level to align the modules that we put into this program uh, so that graduates again have the competency, competency and skill set to be able to teach at junior and leaving certain level. What's a really novel and, and uh, I think a unique element of this offering then as well is that we've introduced a number of education modules. And so again, with the help of our colleagues in um, the School of Education in UCC, uh, we have modules on education studies. So an introduction um, to education, curriculum design, assessment, teaching practice, et cetera, uh, into the introduction of teaching home economics. So looking at the practical uh, teaching uh, of the subject area, looking at uh, micro teaching sessions in terms of developing that skill set and competency. And then we have a preliminary school placement in the third year of the program where uh, students would go out and um, would work alongside an existing uh, teacher in the school system for um, two to three periods per week uh, during the course of the semester. 
So that's a really kind of nice way in terms of getting that core foundation built uh, in terms of education before um, the graduates would go on to the, the professional master of education. So like a number of other programs in different discipline areas, for example, wouldn't have this education foundation piece, but we felt this was really necessary um, to allow students to get really good grounding, not only in the discipline areas, but also in the educational component before embarking on the PME in UCC. Some key questions, I suppose, that have come up over the last week, and just to give you a sense of that, um, I, I mentioned the articulation agreement or the protected pathway. Uh, some queries we've got in refer to um, if, if I decide after three years I want to take a break and, and not go on to the PME for a year or two, can I still do that? The, the simple answer to that is yes, you can, but we can't guarantee you a place uh, in UCC. So you're guaranteed your place once you complete your degree, and then you're guaranteed your place the following September to start the PME in UCC. If you decide to take a break, you can, but we just can't guarantee you a place because there are limited numbers. So that's just really important um, to think about. The other, the other thing is um, we have 32 students coming on the program each year, and that won't change over the coming years. So we're, I suppose we've designed this in terms of the capacity we have in both MTU and also in UCC to support graduates through our placements. And Brian will talk about that a little bit later. Um, so just to, to know that 32 students will be the intake. Guard of vetting is, a, is another query that's come up. Uh, and within that, you will need guard of vetting, and this is handled through our admissions process when you apply for the program. Uh, and that will need to be done uh, in MTU, but equally, uh, when you continue on to UCC, a second guard of vetting will be required at that time. So again, details are on our website uh, on both programs in, if you want more details around that. In terms of admissions, and um, Lillian Griffin is, is on the call here with us this evening as well, who is our admissions officer and is answering some of your queries, no doubt, as we go through this. But maybe just to give you a quick overview, and I know Lillian will be able to answer more of the questions that come in. Um, so under the CAO code, this, all applications must go through the CAO and the course code is CR930. Uh, people can obviously um, look to do their change of mind because the program has only launched last week. Uh, change of mind applications open on the 5th of May. Um, so on, at that point, uh, students who wish to apply for this program can change their mind at that point. Uh, mature applicants uh, are welcome to apply again through the CAO system. Uh, please note, though, that anyone that doesn't have a CAO application opened at this stage, they must do so uh, by the 1st of May. So you literally only have a couple of days to do that, and mature applicants must have their, their application in at that point. So again, it's, it's, it, the timeline is quite tight, but we've pushed, I suppose, to try and get this program out as quickly as we could. We might also have people who are interested uh, in the here and there applications. If um, if that is relevant to you, we will have will have one place available through both of those routes. And again, details on both of those are available on, uh, through the CAO and what they signify. We've also had a number of queries about um, people coming through our further education route through the QQI route. Um, we don't have a pathway this year. Uh, onto the program. There simply wasn't the time uh, to look at a mapping exercise, to look at an entry route from our further education colleges. However, we will be uh, looking at that in the coming year uh, and working with our partner colleges to look at potential pathways. But unfortunately, it is not available this year. So just to reiterate, all applications must go through the CAO and they're all handled through that process. The, the other question that we're getting quite a bit is, you know, what are the points likely to be? Uh, and that's, uh, you know, the difficult question that I know many Leaving Cert students are probably wondering. The simple answer to this is we don't quite know. Uh, and we won't know until we see what the demand for the program is. So maybe just to explain how that operates, we have 32 places on the program. Uh, it really depends on who are the first 32 applicants in terms of the level of points they receive uh, that will determine where the points level is set. 
Um, so effectively, if you have, you know, really strong demand for the program and all of those people get really high points, then, then the points will be quite high because the places are limited. If it's really strong demand for the program, but the, the people who want to go on the program have lower points, then the points are lower. So we have really no idea until we get to that point, uh, probably in August, until we get to see the applications coupled with your leaving certificate results. So I hope that kind of covers off that, but I know it's a, a stressful time for Leaving Cert students and unfortunately we're not able to share any more light on that. Uh, the last thing just before I finish is uh, one of the key things we wanted was, you know, we wanted to be sure that students who came on this program, that perhaps after the second year or the third year decided, you know, teaching is not a career for me. I don't want to be a teacher actually. Uh, we wanted to be sure that we had developed a graduate profile and skill set so that students who came on and studied home economics and business for three years would still have a really strong skill set to go into other areas. Uh, and I mentioned at the start of why we selected business as a second subject option. This is another really strong point for this is because graduates have a really strong discipline expertise when it's coupled with, with business uh, and allows a lot of different pathways for people to consider. So as you're aware, the intended pathway for students coming off the BA program is to go straight into the Professional Masters of Education, UCC. That is how the program is designed. However, graduates will have developed multidisciplinary expertise over the course of the three years in the area of food, in social science, uh, in nutrition and food science, textiles, fashion design, etc. Um, so there are a lot of employment prospects we would expect for graduates after three years of the program if they decide not to go on to the PME. So they might like to work in, in micro food firms, in, in SMEs, in multinationals. So your skill set, I suppose, is really strong because you have a strong business acronym cover, uh, coupled with, you know, really strong expertise in the area of food. Um, but also in the areas of things like textiles, people might want to be entrepreneurs and set up their own business. There are also lots of other areas like care homes, community groups, and lots of social care initiatives because you have an insight on, on food uh, and nutrition, but also because you have modules covered in the area uh, of social care. Uh, you, I reckon you know, students who don't go on to be teachers will have a really, really unique skill set developed uh, and again will be sought after in many areas. Uh, there's also the potential to go on to do other master's programs or indeed go on to do master's research or PhD research as well. So there's a myriad of, of different options there. As I said, the intended pathway is to go on to the PME, but there are other options. The, the last point is that if you decide in second year or going into third year that actually, yeah, you're making the decision, I want to complete the program, but I don't want to go on to the PME, then you don't have to do the school placement you can select another module through our free choice option uh, to select another module uh, within the university. However, it is mandatory that you have this com component completed if you wish to go on to Professional Master uh, of Education in UCC. So thank you very much. That's it for me. I hope I've given you a good overview of the program. Uh, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and I'm going to hand over um, to my colleague, Dr. Brian Murphy, who is the PME director in UCC. Uh, and I'll be able to answer some of your questions along with my, uh, my colleagues who are here um, if you put it in, into the Q&A uh, button at the bottom. So thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. And Noel, thank you very much for your very comprehensive overview of our new and exciting program. As Noel already introduced me, I'm Dr. Brian Murphy from the School of Education, UCC, and I'm the director of the Professional Master of Education course. And I'm delighted to be here tonight. I suppose it's an honor and a privilege to be part of such a historic development in the teacher uh, education of teachers in the country. As Noel said, the first new program in home economics for nearly 70 years, and that's um, due to a lot of hard work and um, initiative behind the scenes. So I'm delighted to maybe add to Noel's presentation uh, and to talk about the PME aspects and the teaching aspects of, of the program. I suppose to begin, if you are interested in this program and the fact that it is being framed as a teaching qualification, obviously we'd be looking for a certain type of person who wants to become a teacher at post-primary level. 
And obviously with the post-primary curriculum really quite focused on subject areas, it would be very important that anybody who was coming on to teach a particular subject would have a great passion and interest for that subject. So I suppose we're looking for people who are passionate about their subject, in this case, home economics and business. And obviously, if you're coming down, the, going down the teaching route, we'd also expect that you would really relish the opportunity, perhaps, to work with adolescent students on a daily basis. And I suppose why many people come into teaching is the, the desire, really, I suppose, to contribute to um, the, the development of young people's lives. And it really is a fantastic career if that's your motivation. I think this is the right program for you. Now, I suppose. What I'm talking about really is further down the line, but it's equally as important in terms of understanding the overall program. And we're talking really about when, I, when we kick in in the School of Education in UCC, while the program is collaborative for all five years, it's really in year four that we begin the teacher education part proper, though you will have studied education in MTU and you will have had the opportunity to do some uh, placement work in a school. I suppose to be very clear about our own PME program, obviously it's a two year full time program. It's framed at level nine, and that's a level above the MTU qualification, which is a bachelor degree at level eight. So it's a little bit of a step up. It is a master's qualification. And I suppose it's an important distinction to make that it's a professional master's. And that essentially means that it's not a master's like where somebody goes off and does research, you know, pure research. This is a master's that uh, leads to a professional qualification, and that is recognition and registration to be uh, a post-primary teacher. Obviously, for us to be able to offer uh, this course, it has to be fully accredited by the Teaching Council of Ireland. So the program is fully accredited. And when you do this program, uh, when you complete the PME, post-PME, then you are, you are entitled to register as a teacher of both of the subjects from your undergraduate degree in uh, MTU and by virtue of the fact of having completed the PME in UCC. And I suppose what, what Noel alluded to this earlier, and I think it's very important, I think what we have behind us in the School of Education in UCC is a tradition and we are, have been educating teachers for over 116 years. And I suppose I like to say to people that that hist history uh, really um, contributes to us knowing what we do and knowing how to do it and knowing that we do it well. So we have a, a national and international rep reputation for preparing student teachers or teachers of the highest quality. And we're actually very, very proud of that. As Noel has already said, if you intend doing the new program and you're coming on board, to uh, do the PME, there is a requirement that you do reasonably well in your MTU degree in order to be accepted onto the PME. So we have here what's, requ what's required, and that is a second class honours grade two award. And that's the same entry requirement, you know, for all PME students, even if you're not coming in from this program. So anybody who applies to the PME who wants to teach Irish or science or maths or Spanish or whatever, also has to have a minimum of a 2H2. So what that essentially means in, say, in post-primary speak, our grades might be that it might be, what might have been known as a C grade, where you have a first class honours, a second class honours grade one being a B, and then the second class honours grade two being a C or a H3, a, you know, in the current Leaving Cert band. So you have to do you have to be, do reasonably well to be um, availing of the protected pathways place, and when you're in th sec third year, sorry, in MTU, you will be making an application to come on to the PME program, but you won't be competing with anybody to get onto our program by virtue of the fact that you're an MTU student on this program, you will automatically be given a place. And obviously that is subject to uh, you getting the 2H2 award. And I suppose that's the joy of this uh, program. You're not competing with anybody else to get onto the PME. Whereas if you were coming onto the PME trying to teach French, Spanish, Irish, 
maths, English, whatever, you have to compete with lots of other people and achieve quite high grades in order for that to, um, to happen. So I suppose the application will happen when you're in third year. Uh, application will take place really around January of when you're in your third year of your BA degree in MTU. But there's plenty of time to worry about that later down the line. But just to let you know that the joy of this program is that you don't have to compete. You have a guaranteed place and that's what this protected pathway actually means. What I'd like to highlight, I suppose, and I've, I've been looking at some of the chat questions um, uh, that are coming through and a lot of them are focusing on, you know, how much you're in school. And I think this is a really important um, part of our UCC PME program, which is really, really a selling feature of the program and one feature of the program, which our partner schools really, really like. And that is the joy of the PME in UCC is that you actually are in school for two full school years. So in year four, you're in a school, PME one, you're in a school uh, for the whole school year. And then in year two, you're in a different school and you're in a different school for that uh, PME two as well. So the year long placements gives you a huge uh, insight into how a school works. And it gives you an opportunity to have a class group or a number of class groups over a whole school year and get to know them and build up relationships with them and really get a sense of, you know, the momentum of a school year when it's busy and all the things that have to happen when you're in a school. Now this would contrast with a lot of placement options in other um, teacher education programs where students go into schools merely for block placement for a number of weeks. But remember in UCC in year four and five, you will be in the school um, for the whole school year. And you won't be in there for just a few weeks. You'll be coming, coming in and out. You'll be in school and in college simultaneously. And that's really the joy. And that's the other um, point I make here in the second bullet point on the slide, where you are on campus in UCC, in PME1, on certain days and certain afternoons. And then you go into school the following day. And you can really implement what we're talking about in lectures in a very authentic, and meaningful way. So we find that this is a really rich way of learning the concepts in practice, what we're trying to uh, teach you and how to develop your own understandings and practice of teaching, learning and assessment. And obviously we have a huge um, uh, network of partner schools, currently over 80 of them. And these schools work very closely with us and um, you will be uh, supported in your initiation really into the classroom by experienced cooperating teachers in our schools and by School of Education staff who will go and visit you in your classroom for a, new, an, a number of visits over each of the years one and two of the PME. The other good news about the UCC PME and the UCC PME model of which obviously you'll be guaranteed uh, entry into is that um, for students, anyone, any student starting the program must have a school placement in order to start the program. You cannot begin the program without having a school placement, especially when you're going to be in uh, school for a whole year. So the good news is that school placement is arranged for you by us. You don't have to go looking, you don't have to, you know, send out 20, 30, 40 applications to all these different schools. We are very privileged to have an agreement with our partner schools to take our students on placement in both years one and year two of the PME. So you will be guaranteed a school placement and you will ha actually have the opportunity to select uh, some of those, uh, a certain number of schools and you will be placed in one of those schools. And that system has worked really, really well. And I suppose we're in a privileged position because school placement in other parts of the country is often a difficult um, um, enterprise. It's a difficult thing to find because there are lots of other institutions, but we're really looking in the School of Education to have such close links with schools and who will accept our graduates. And the schools have already expressed great excitement about the prospect of placing uh, uh, home economics and business students from this new program from 2024, which is when the first intake into the PME would be. 
And as Noel has said, one other stipulation, and it, it wouldn't be anything new uh, to add, is that obviously coming and in and starting in UCC, you would also required, uh, be required to go through a vetting process. And that vetting is necessary for the schools for, and it, the same vetting would be done for all of entrants onto the PME in the May or June before you start the PME so that you're ready to begin the placement uh, in the following August. And that's all handled by UCC admissions. So just I suppose uh, people, a lot of people ask, what, you know, on the PME, obviously you're going to be studying how to become a teacher, but it's not quite as straightforward as telling somebody to go into the classroom and stand up there and talk, because that's not actually what happens. Um, so these are just, I suppose, Noel spoke about credits and we, everything in the university is based on credits, which is the amount of time really that you give something and the amount of work that, and that's expected. So obviously in PME 1, in, which would be your fourth year of study, if you do, do end up going, doing the two programs, you would have school placement. And that's for a number of class periods a week and you must be in school for specific days and times. You have um, reflect, research and professional experience portfolio, which is really integrating the theory we're doing of education with your classroom practice. You are obviously going to study the um, teaching of home, home economics and the teaching of business to uh, uh, an in-depth degree. So basically you, you are supported to teach both home, home economics and, and uh, business right up to leaving search through specialist modules which deal with the teaching of it and the assessment of both subjects. And obviously then there's a lot of prescribed content that you must study to be a teacher and that's set by the Teaching Council of Ireland. And I've listed some of the topic areas that you have to study to become a teacher. And they are things like the history of education, the philosophy of education, psychology and sociology of education, inclusive education, which is really around how to manage students who have special educational needs and students for whom you know, their mother tongue is not English, et cetera. And obviously a big factor in schooling is around the curriculum, what you are taught in school and how you're supposed to assess that. Um, and that's PME one study. And in PME two, the amount of placement that you do increases. So you're in, actually in school for four days of the week and in, only in college in one day a week, which again, is a fantastic initiation into what it would be like to be working in a school full time. You have to do a research paper, which is obviously again, based on your practice, on your teaching of home economics or business. We are required also to prepare you to th think about how to teach literacy and numeracy across your subjects. Uh, we, we prepare you for uh, insights into the issues that are uh, relevant for uh, schools like, for example, the school and the law and, you know, how to te teach RSE, which is Relationships and Sexuality Education, and SPHE, Social, uh, Personal and Health Education. We have curriculum assessment, again, and we you are also have your specialist pedagogies or how to teach home economics and how to teach business with a focus really on maybe more senior cycle um, type um, concerns. I suppose, uh, again, just to come back to the placement, um, a lot of students ask, have been asking, you know, how long are the placements? And we, I've already mentioned that they are both year long placements. But I suppose the thing about this, if you were interested in doing this program and you are from not really the Cork area, then you have to be prepared to go into one of the schools with which we work. And most of those schools are in Cork City County maybe West Waterford, um, East Kerry, South Limerick, South Tipperary. So all Munster based. And obviously, if you're going to be coming in and out to campus in PME 1, that would be a consideration that you would you know, be traveling and whatever else. But the advantage that year long placement offers you is really, really important. And I suppose one of the regulations of accreditation of the program is that you're in two different schools between PME 1 and PME 2. 
and those schools must be contrasting. So it might be the idea that you might be in a boys' school or a girls' school and then a mixed school the following year, or you might be in a school that's categorized as disadvantaged in one of the years, and you might be in a fee-paying school the following year. So that gives you a very rich experience in terms of what you might be meeting post-qualification in teaching. When you're in PME 1, you teach six periods a week. Um, uh, in your school and that increases to nine periods in PME too and obviously placement is not just about teaching there's a whole heap of other uh, tasks that have to go on uh, like preparing uh, lessons reflecting and doing research with your class groups etc lots of nice and interesting things to keep you very busy uh, especially when it's a level nine masters um, I suppose one of the other things people talk about uh, in teaching is really the pastoral care and looking after your students. So you as a student teacher would be expected to be looking after or looking out for the students that you're teaching on your placement. And it's the same, we do the same on the program. We have a pastoral um, care um, set up where we look after our students as best we can. And obviously if you're going to be in a PME group for some lectures of maybe 150, 160 students, then we contrast that with lots of small group work. So you would have a specialist tutor who looks after you on school placement. You have small group tutorials with other people who are, you know, teaching home economics and you have those weekly and you discuss, you know, the issues that you're having and how to sort them out, etc. We also have a, a placement coordinator who looks after your um, placement in year one and year two. And uh, the placement coordinator does all the hard work in trying to match you, your subject to what the school needs. Obviously, you're going to be in small groups because you will know each other well, having done the MTU degree, but you'll also be in those groups uh, in terms of home economics, but also in terms of business, you'll be meeting other students who are teaching business. So that will be an interesting dynamic for you too. And we also have a very vibrant staff student committee who sort um, and issues that arise. So we do listen to students and we try to practice what we preach in terms of what the best practice is in um, managing students. Finally, these, these are other, you know, um, various pieces of information that people often ask, I suppose, at the moment. And as Noel would have said at the outset, the, the motivation and the desire to, to devise this program really came from the schools and the schools with which we work in saying that there was a huge uh, lack or a huge supply issue with home economics teachers. So there were schools all over the country that couldn't find home economics teachers and that, you know, find it difficult to build home economics jobs. And that's really our motivation in wanting to address that and also to give students an option of doing uh, the program uh, down south. Um, many students then, you know, many of our PME graduates um, do the PME and then want an experience of teaching abroad and our experience would tell us that we have PME graduates whose qualification has automatically been accepted uh, to teach in Australia, in New Zealand and in Canada and of course in the UK where Irish teachers would be very much in demand. So there is no issue there if, if you wanted to get experience abroad and come back. I mean, the bad news is around the fees. The, the, there are, the, because it's um, a level nine award, you uh, would be able to apply for SUSE funding and the SUSE uh, funding would cover uh, your level nine, the PME award if you're eligible because uh, it's your first level nine or master's level qualification. If you have another qualification already that might have influenced that might impact on that. But in general, the fees uh, for the PME at the moment are, as laid down there, a total between the two years of €11,000, um, which sounds a lot of money, but actually is a great investment in your future um, career. And I hope I've covered generally what people seem to want to know about the PME element of our, uh, um, our programme. And if you have any specific queries, we'd be only delighted to answer them. And I provided the PME email address there on the presentation uh, on the last bullet point there, pm.education at ucc.ie. And your query will be answered, whatever it is, as uh, quickly as possible. 
So I suppose I hope that it's given you uh, some sense and taste of what we offer between the two programs and just uh, to um, thank you all for participating in this really exciting initiative and to wish all of you who are preparing for Leave Research the very best of success. And, you know, we, we look forward to working with you in the future uh, as future stu prospective students of the programme. So I'd like to thank you on my behalf and also obviously on behalf of Noel who, who led the presentation here. So thanks very much. Thanks, Brian. And just maybe to come in there, just to let people know that we will be emailing out the presentation um, to everybody who registered this evening. So it'd be a great opportunity, um, again, to review some of the questions that have been posed and the overall presentation. Uh, we have been answering a, a huge number of queries coming through. Um, Brian, there's been a couple of questions there on in terms of the different schools, do you have to be in different schools in both years? And is there, are the placements paid? And can you arrange your own ones? You might just give a quick overview on that. Okay, so I suppose, as I said, we work with specific schools and those schools are, um, as I said, generally in the Munster area and very specific schools. So if you were you know, from up the country and you wanted to do your placement in Galway or whatever, that wouldn't be possible. You would have to select one of the schools with which we work. Um, the school, what we generally ask, you, and, and this may change by the time 2024 comes, but obviously what we could do now is give you an indication of what we do. So what we ask, we provide a list of schools to the students and they are uh, asked to select 10 schools and the students then select 10 schools and we more or less guarantee that you would be put in one of those 10 schools that you've chosen. So there is a, a degree of choice, but choice from a particular list. The other bad news, and I, you know, I fully, we, we have fought for this long and hard that placements would be paid. They are not paid. We have fought long and hard that the year two placements would be paid, but so far that has fallen on deaf ears. But what I would say to you is because you're in the school for uh, a year and you're considered really part of the staff, there are lots of opportunities for you to earn extra money as a student teacher, both subbing and in supervision and substitution work. So many of our students, particularly at the moment when schools are really stretched in terms of staffing, are while they're doing their placement hours, are also getting the opportunity to supervise and substitute in other classes and they're getting paid for those. Thanks, Brian, because, uh, you know, that is, a, that is a major concern, I suppose, for students. So it's good to get some, some context around that, that there is some opportunities available as well. Um, so I think that brings us to the end, really, of the presentation. Um, we hope we've answered and provided a lot of clarity. I suppose the key thing for people is, is the CAO, whether it's opening an application before the 1st of May. Um, change of mind, as I said, opens on the 5th of May. Uh, and that closes by the 1st of July. So there is a little bit of time for people to think uh, what they want to do. So uh, I, we will stay on for the, the next couple of minutes to answer. There is some um, queries still open uh, there on the Q&A and we will answer those. Before, so if people who are waiting for an answer want to hang on. Uh, otherwise, I think we're, we've covered everything. Brian, is there anything else you want to add? Or we're, I think we've covered most things for people this evening. Uh, I think we've covered most things. Well, I think what, what's really important is um, the idea that the program is really, really integrated in a way to really meet the requirements of the, of the students who, you know, are coming in wanting to learn content, but also in terms of what, you know, the career, career possibilities obviously is framed for teaching and meeting the teaching council requirements. But I would say to you, you know, obviously people begin courses and you know, you have outlined, I think, very importantly, that there are other options. If teaching by year three, your mind has changed, you know, your choice, you know, maybe the MTU uh, BA degree has opened other possibilities for you. And I think that's a really, um, it's a really uh, well-designed uh, program for teaching, but also has other uh, options if you finally decide that um, teaching isn't for you. 
Thanks, Brian. So if anyone has any questions following tonight's uh, webinar, if you want to send an email to info at cit.ie. Um, also, if you go onto the website and search for the program, go onto Google and, and search uh, Home Economics MTU, uh, you will find lots more uh, detail about the program. You'll also get access to all the modules. Uh, and there's an email address there as well if you want to follow up with any queries. So uh, as I said, we will stay on for the next couple of minutes to answer any of the outstanding queries that are in the text box. Uh, to thank you all uh, for our Leaving Cert students to wish you the very best of luck in the weeks ahead. You've had a, a really difficult year, uh, year or so. So the very best of luck with the, with the exams. Uh, and we hopefully look forward to meeting many of you uh, in September. Uh, so thanks very much. Thank you.